I recently read Mean Baby, an autobiography by the American actor Selma Blair from the Hellboy series and Legally Blonde, who later went on to develop multiple sclerosis and had hematopoietic stem cell transplant. I'm going to summarize the book and talk about it from my perspective. As a neurologist, there will be spoilers, but nothing that would really ruin your enjoyment at the book, because a lot of this is public information anyway. She writes a lot about her childhood and about her difficult relationship with her mother. I'll talk about her battle with alcohol and a series of traumatic experiences in her life. Then I'll talk about her symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment of multiple sclerosis with hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And I'll talk a little bit about her encounters with celebrities that she talks about in the book and give my overall review and perspective. Selma was born in 1972 in Detroit. She's part Jewish and is supposedly a descendant of the biblical Aaron, a member of the Kohanim. And she did go to Hebrew school in her youth, although she herself is not particularly religious. In fact, she's kind of a believer in the cult and has interest in things like clairvoyance and tarot card readers and superstition, that sort of thing. In fact, the opening line of the book talks about how she saw a fortune teller at age seven who predicted she would grow up to become a beautiful actor. The title of the book comes from the fact that when Selma was a baby, she supposedly had a mean snarl on her face, so people thought she was a mean looking baby. Also, as a young child, she was somewhat temperamental and prone to getting into trouble. For example, at a friend's birthday party, she once pretended that she dropped an earring just so everyone would waste their time looking for it, ruining the whole party when in fact there was no earring. Selma grew up somewhat wealthy as her grandfather, Pop Hop, grew up himself poor but eventually became the owner of a successful chain of supermarkets called Pen Fruit. Her mother, Molly, was a lawyer and was somewhat interested in fashion and luxury and she bought Selma a $1,000 Burberry coat at age 12. Selma's father, Elliot, had a less significant role in her life and at one point they were estranged and Selma also has three sisters. A lot of the book focuses on Selma's difficult relationship with her mother, Molly, who was a beautiful woman very concerned with physical appearances. She was intensely critical of Selma, often calling her a manic depressive. At one point, she thought Selma was too thin and tried to fatten her up by putting beer in her cereal, which was ineffective. Later on, when Selma was in seventh grade and weighed 90 pounds, she became concerned that Selma could become too fat and told her, this is your weight. You are not to gain any more weight because she wanted Selma to be a tall, beautiful model. Molly would get angry at Selma if she got sick because she didn't want to take a day off of work to take her to the doctor. And later on, even as Selma became successful in acting, Molly was very discouraging, always putting Selma down. Throughout her life, Selma had problems with alcohol. She first became drunk at age seven on Manischewitz wine and had numerous instances of binge drinking behavior. At one point as an adult, she was on a plane with her son and she drank alcohol and also took the sleeping medication Ambien and she had to be taken to the hospital due to complications and people took pictures of her and it was a big media event. She had to go to rehab where she actually fostered a relationship with Britney Spears who was there at the same time. However, she was able to to quit alcohol and has not had a drink since that day on the plane. Throughout her life, Selma had numerous traumatic experiences. For instance, at age 14, her high school dean sexually assaulted her. She was later sexually assaulted and raped numerous times, often being taken advantage of while drunk. Her teenage boyfriend, Bradley Bluestone, died mysteriously in his college dormitory, and the parents did not reveal the cause of death. To this day, she doesn't know what happened. Her parents divorced. She also had multiple traumatic romantic breakups. At one point after a breakup, she attempted to commit suicide by swallowing a bottle of pills, including extra strength Tylenol, and she had to be taken to the hospital to be given activated charcoal and to have her stomach pumped. Her pa she herself was married, but divorced. She also experienced the death of a close friend, Carrie Fisher, who's the actor who played Princess Leia in the Star Wars trilogy. She died of a cardiac arrest. Also, Selma's son, Arthur, has a heart condition, which caused him to become unresponsive at times, and she had to perform CPR numerous times, although he always recovered and is doing well. Next, we move to her symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Selma believes she likely had multiple sclerosis for decades prior to diagnosis. 
For instance, she, when she was young, she remembers that when she had fever, she often was dragging one of her legs. Later on, she had a lot of facial pain and had several dental procedures, root canals, but it was later determined that the pain was caused by trigeminal neuralgia, a facial pain syndrome known to be associated with MS, so those dental procedures may have been unnecessary. In her 20s, she experienced a burning sensation in her arms, and it reminded her of her character Liz Sherman from the Hellboy series. At age 22, she was diagnosed with optic neuritis after having a bout of eye pain and vision changes, which is inflammation of the optic nerve known to be associated with MS, but she was not diagnosed with MS. It's actually a routine test to have an MRI scan of the brain after getting optic neuritis, but she never actually had that done. Later on, she had periods of imbalance or even falls, periods of weakness and numbness of the limbs. After delivering her son, Arthur, she had stiffness, difficulty walking to the bathroom, but it was attributed to just normal postpartum syndromes. She saw a series of doctors and was mostly blown off, sometimes told that she had anxiety, until she saw Dr. Berkeley at Cedar sinai who did an MRI of her brain, and she had lesions typical of multiple sclerosis, including six active lesions. Active lesions are lesions that take up the gadolinium contrast dye and represent active inflammation. Around this time, she had pretty significant symptoms of weakness, imbalance, and slurred speech, and even incontinence. She eventually pursued the treatment hematopoietic stem cell transplant by Dr. Rich Richard Burt at Northwestern University. This is a treatment where chemotherapy is given to wipe out the immune system and then your own stem cells are given to replenish your immune system. It's not really a stem cell therapy per se, it's really the chemotherapy that's the effective aspect of the treatment, and the stem cells are really just to regenerate your immune system to reduce the risk of side effects. This is a very effective treatment and sometimes produces dramatic improvement and long-term remission. There are various conditioning regimens used with HSCT. Most likely, she received cyclophosphamide and antithymocyte globulin. I say that just because that's a regimen that doctors Dr. Burt used often. She did, in fact, improve significantly, although she did still have significant residual symptoms. Near the end of the book, she talks a lot about her relationship with her son, Arthur, and she also talks about how her mother became ill and eventually passed away, and she was deeply saddened by the death of her mother, even though they didn't have a great relationship throughout her life. Throughout the book, she also talks about her relationship with various celebrities and generally has positive things to say about them. For instance, she compliments the acting skills of Reese Witherspoon, her co-star in Legally Blonde. She also talks about how she met Donald Trump at a gala who complimented her hair. So so now I'll move to my overall review of the book. I really enjoyed it overall. It's always interesting to read about people's challenges. When we think of prominent people, we always assume they have it so easy and their life is so privileged, but really everyone is facing their own challenges. And it's just interesting to read about her childhood. And she writes about it in a very clear and engaging way. And she has a very good memory for her childhood events. She's an excellent writer. I would say it's a really very well written, very simple and easy to read. I would guess that she had some journal entries that she was able to piece together later on into a manuscript. Some of it is a little bit disjointed where she's jumping from event to event, but a lot of it reads more smoothly and she's able to pack a lot of information into a relatively short book, only around 300 pages. I would have been interested to learn more about her sisters and other members of her family. And also when she talks about her acting career, she talks about it almost as if it sort of just happened, like it fell into her lap. But it would have been interesting to know a little bit more details in terms of the time and effort and strategies she employed to develop her career and become very successful. But overall, I enjoyed the book. I would definitely recommend it. I'll include an Amazon link. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.